Pass up the Jeep, it's good to be free. Load up the pans and fishing poles. The highway is long, the wheels turning round. Pack up the cook stove and the bowls. Arlo and I, we hit the open road. Arlo and I are on the road. Hey everybody, well, Arlo and I decided to go out for a nice little drive. Um, it's super hot today. Uh, it's in the 90s, uh, not a cloud in the sky, and it's just blazing hot. Um, but we thought we'd just uh, go for a nice dusty desert drive and see what we could find um, just to get out of the house, um, Arlo's. Arlo's doing what he likes to do, hanging out the window and checking out the scenery there. Like I said, it is just super hot today. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna be getting out and about in the desert too much uh, today. Um, it wouldn't be fair to Arlo to get him out too much in this heat um, but if I can find a nice cool area um, where there's some water um, we'll definitely get out and uh, go around a little bit. Um, but it's nice to see uh, what's going on in the desert at uh, obviously different times of the season and now this is uh, about the beginning of June and uh, the heat's really ramping up came on fast. We had a nice uh, rainy early spring, which was nice, um, but that's over with and now uh, we're just left with the heat. It's been really dry. Um, hope to head up uh, to northern Arizona uh, very soon, probably within the next couple of days. Um, that's going to be a completely different environment. It's going to be a lot cooler um, and a lot more pleasant. Um, but down here, uh, even though it's hot and dry, there's always something uh, beautiful to see out here. The scenery is always beautiful. Uh, the Sonoran Desert is definitely one of those places where you may first come here and go, oh man, it looks so dry and desolate. But the more time uh, you spend here, uh, you realize um, how lush it really is, even at the driest uh, time of the year. Now that beautiful flower is called a blue stem prickle poppy and uh, also called a cowboy's fried egg um, for obvious reasons. Look at that flower. That really does look like a fried egg and uh, it is a super uh, prickly um, and poisonous uh, flower um, but um, it is very beautiful and it's growing along the side of the road here and I had to stop the Jeep um, because it's so striking. Once again look at this flower it looks just like a fried egg. Look at that. Look at that. These prickly 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 leaves as well as these um, seed pods here. Um, very prickly. Very interesting plant and very beautiful. So I did stop off along the way here so Arlo could get his feet wet here in the water, um, cool down from being in the hot car. Um, so we're just gonna walk along here, find a nice little shady spot. Feet wet are. So 
we're just going to spend, I don't know, just a couple minutes here um, so he can uh, cool down a little bit and then we'll uh, get back on the dusty road. In the water, there's lots of little minnows and uh, crawfish and uh, little bugs and stuff. Uh, Arlo loves to chase the crawfish around uh, in the water. Uh, he tries to stomp on them and, and bite at them and stuff, so that's kind of fun. He went down uh, the water down over there that way. Um, but like I said, we're just going to take a little, a little pit stop here. Um, cool off a little bit and then we'll uh, go back in the road, go on the desert, see what we can find out there. I love to watch all the, the dragonflies, the bright orange dragonflies and the little tiny little uh, blue uh, damselflies uh, buzzing around in the water here. I don't know if they'll show up on the, the camera very well, but I'll try to catch them. There goes one right there. All right, Arlo. Let's head back to the Jeep and we'll uh, hit the road. Come on, buddy. There's that wet, slimy dog looking out the window again. Oh man, he smells like swamp water. <laughs> what do you think, buddy? What do you think? Smell like swamp water? It's hot. Hot air blowing through here. It's like a hot blow dryer blowing through the, the Jeep here, so. He won't be wet for long. Now all along the hillside here, this beautiful inflorescence um, of uh, prickly pear just like exploding all over the place. Um, some of them this beautiful yellow color and some of them it's almost apricot type color. Um, I'm going to pull over here in a second and uh, show you what those look like. Right here, check these out. Beautiful one right up down here. Look at the color of that flower. I don't know if there's anything that's more beautiful uh, than cactus flowers because they're so delicate and so vibrant in color. There's a little bee or fly in there. Some of our native uh, bees and flies. Those guys, uh, bees in there working, uh, doing their job and uh, pollinating all these flowers here. Those, those are going to be some nice, beautiful fruit here coming soon. Look at those guys in there uh, doing their job here. Now, uh, you often hear people talking about, um, you know, saving the bees and uh, saving the honeybee and all that, which is really important. Um, but what's way more important, and you don't hear anybody talking about those, are our native bees. And they're the real uh, workhorses here that are uh, pollinating all of our uh, native plants here. Um, and that's what these guys are doing right here. Um, way more important to uh, protect our native bees than we are um, to protect the, uh, the European honeybee. Although uh, um, that is a uh, 
an important species for agriculture, um, for our wild plants and flowers. Um, really, it's our native bees that are doing all the hard work. And these guys are doing just that. Huh. This beautiful spot right here. And not only are those uh, the uh, prickly pears blooming, uh, but these uh, choya are blooming as well, and these beautiful uh, yellow flowers. And once again, uh, that's another plant where we can get some uh, some fruits from. Now those are more like a vegetable. They're kind of sour, tart. Uh, sort of a green uh, fruit, but we'll be able to uh, harvest some of those. Now, here we have some nice, uh, this is a fruit from the banana yucca which you saw earlier, which we did maybe about a month ago, uh, I collected uh, banana yucca blossoms um, and I pickled those. Um, at this point now, um, they have uh, produced fruit and I'm gonna collect a few of these uh, banana yucca fruits and we'll take them home. see all those uh, blossoms that have fallen down in here. So let's grab these fruits. Um, now these fruits uh, are still a little green uh, but I'm gonna take them home and I'm gonna ripen them up and they're gonna get sweeter and sweeter. Um, I know that the uh, Native Americans uh, used to uh, ripen these and then they would uh, roast them and then pound them into cakes and then dry them and then uh, they could store them that way they stored for a long time um, but we're gonna uh, take some of these home and try them out i'm looking at all those dried blossoms in there and it reminds me of the uh, prickly pear blossoms which i collected which made a great sun tea I'm thinking maybe I might want to take some of those dried uh, yucca blossoms and try them for a tea as well. Yeah. I think you will. I think I'm going to uh, collect a bunch of these uh, uh, yucca blossoms and dried yucca blossoms here and try them as a sun tea and see how that comes out. Hmm. Well, that's it. I think we're going to head back to the house and uh, grab something for lunch, uh, call it a day. Um, we just wanted to get out of the house and go out to the desert for a little bit. Uh, went out for a couple hours and uh, that's it. Um, I don't know. Just another boring video of us doing nothing. <laughs> um, but if you did like this video, Please like, please subscribe. That always helps yes. a lot. And we'll see you in the next little adventure, I guess. Alright, bye bye. Load up the pans and fish and poles. Oh, when I, we get the